Today I'm going to be a fighting nerd and I'm going to try to find out why Murad Dubalishvili is a machine. What's up guys? So in this video I'm going to be studying the style of UFC Bantamweight contender, one of the best UFC Bantamweights in the world, fighting for the title at UFC 306, the Sphere event against Sean O'Malley, Marab the Machine Dabalish really I'm going to try to figure out why he's nicknamed the Machine dig a little bit deeper into his style so before I get into this fighter study leave a comment who I should study next and yeah let's start with the basic stuff about Marab now we know the basic stuff this video is not about the basic stuff it's about digging deeper right as I said but with that being said there are some things we got to mention here about Marab we know he's really good using his wrestling he's got really good cardio he sets a really good pace so we established that we know he's really good at what he does whether you love his style or you hate his style because he definitely has a polarizing style which a lot of fans just can't stand but no matter your opinion on it you have to admit that it's very effective as far as the questions going into this, why is his cardio so good? I feel like a lot of fans think um, this a lot. Like, what makes this guy's cardio so different? It's part of the reason why I think he's called a machine. Uh, how does he shoot 50 takedowns in a fight? Again, same thing. Uh, how did he get better later in his career? He is 33 years old. And how did he out-wrestle an Olympic gold medalist? I'm talking about his last performance, the decision win against Henry Cejudo. And will his style be able to dominate Sean O'Malley in his upcoming title opportunity? So first off, I'm going to go through his resume slash background. So he's 17 and 4, not too many fights. He is currently on a 10 fight UFC win streak though, which is crazy, especially considering he lost his first two fights in the UFC. As far as explaining these losses, right, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to obviously be too negative on Marab in this video, even though I'm breaking down his style unbiasedly. But with that being said, I'm trying to talk about the good of Marab, what makes him so good, because he is clearly good. But he does have that loss in his debut to Frankie Sions, and it's kind of like a very close decision, and it was what it was type of fight. Then in his second UFC fight, it's the fight versus Ricky Simone, which had a very controversial ending. Basically, he got caught in like a mounted guillotine, and he was trying to like survive and get out, but then you could argue that he was put to sleep, and tough to explain, you'd have to go and watch it. But as far as his background, he comes from a Sambo and Judo background, training since he was young, but really got into MMA a little bit later in his life. And he also trains at Saralongo. Uh, trains with Aljamain Sterling, who's one of the greatest UFC bantamweights of all time. So the first thing that I noticed after studying the style of Murad Valdashvili, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video, studying him particularly, is because I've kind of felt like this for a long time about Murad's style. It's the way that he looks when you watch him fight. When you watch Marab fight, now a lot of people just make fun of him, like, what is this fighting style? Or His fighting style is so weird to watch because it's... I feel like he just, he has a style, he's constantly moving, right? So this is kind of a theory that I have. Now, maybe it's true, there are probably some statistics done on this in the past about fighting, but I do feel like when you're in a fight, your opponent is watching you, right? So they mirror you a little bit. Sometimes when I watch UFC fights, say I watch Piotr Jan for a full day, I'm walking around my house shadow boxing like Piotr Jan with the high guard and things like that. And I don't know if you guys relate, but I feel like watching something, you kind of adapt to it and you start to adjust your style a little bit towards it. And I think the same goes when you're fighting someone. So I talked about Marab constantly moving, right? He's there with the high guard and he's just moving constantly. I think that's one of the reasons he's so effective is because yes, he has a gas tank advantage, but he's also moving constantly. So his opponents got increased senses, right? They're moving a lot. They're more active than they usually would be. And I think that's because of Marab's just body language in a fight where he's just constantly just there, just moving up and down, whether he's throwing strikes or not, which he is always throwing strikes anyway, but he, his body language is good. And I do think it's part of the reason why he's so effective. I mean, I think he increases the senses of his opponents. I know a lot of people talk about Piotr Jan. There was like a clip that went around after his fight versus Marab where he had to stuff like 50 takedowns. He like flinched after the fight in an interaction with Marab and a lot of people were saying like he was so shaken up by Marab in that fight because Marab had a crazy high output performance. It increases the senses of the opponents so they're they're, yes, they can stuff takedowns because they are aware of takedowns coming and they're, they're on, their mind is on, right? They're ready for whatever and but I also think it makes them wear down a little bit because they're reacting so much to everything. And I do think that played a part in Jan struggling against Marab.
A lot of people say Piotr Jan is a slow starter. In my opinion, Marab didn't let him get started. Excellent output and pace, phenomenal cardio and heart. As far as his striking, let's talk about his striking real quick. We know he's not a striker, right? So let's break this down. Pretty wide stance. He's got like a bounce to his... It's a kind of unique stance. It's bouncy, but it's not too karate. His hands are very high, typically. He has decent tight boxing as well. He showcased that a little bit against Cody Stamen. And he has decent boxing. He really does. I do think he's a little too reckless, though. I know I'm not the UFC Bantamweight number one contender, but I do think there are some obvious kind of, not holes in his game, but things that are there. We've seen him get caught by left hooks, and I think that's a little bit of his recklessness. Obviously, Henry Cejudo was able to stun him. Marlon Rice was able to stun him a couple times in their fight with big left hooks. He's willing to go power for power, which is fine when you're really good and really powerful, but he doesn't have that much power. And his head movement isn't amazing. He does drop his hands in the pocket as well. So he's a little too reckless, even though I know he's trying to set the high output pace, which has worked for him, if we're being honest. He's only lost twice, and he's never been knocked out in the UFC. So I will say he does have a decent chin as well. He's also flashier than many will say with the striking. Does throw back fists. He does throw some flashy kicks as well, which are decent. I don't see them being something where he just throws a wheel kick and knocks O'Malley out cold. But he has them, which is there, so you gotta mention it for his striking. But yeah, he's a decent striker, but it's definitely not his thing, right? But he does use it well to disguise his takedown attempts. Again, everything is disguising a takedown attempt. You guys heard me talk about his constant movement. It's also constant punching, even though he's not a great boxer, right? He is tight with his boxing. He's not too loopy, too wild, or anything like that, but... The constant movement I do think gets to his opponents, whether his boxing's phenomenal or not. Which is why I think you can make the argument that he did better in the striking against Piotr Jan compared to how Corey Sanhagen did, which shouldn't make sense on paper. Now let's get into the grappling, right? The wrestling, everything, the jujitsu. Let's break down Marab's grappling. First off, we'll start with the clinch, because I do think it's part of grappling and your whole game there. He is really good at using the clinch. Very, very good at using the clinch. We saw that against Jose Aldo. Despite what you think, boring or whatever, as far as breaking it down, if you're breaking it down like a sport, trying to win, right? He wins with this. Really good holding people up against the cage, landing total strikes in those positions. Definitely knows how the judges are going to score fights and things like that. So I think he's smart as well. Shoots single legs and double legs. He's also got good takedown versatility. I think that's because of his judo background. Uh, really good at catching kicks. Really good at that. Like against Piotr Jan where he shot 49 takedown attempts. A lot of them, yeah, he shoots the double leg. Yeah, he'll shoot a single leg when Jan's in southpaw and things like that. And he's really good at those. But even when he's not taking you down immediately, his chain wrestling with the takedowns is really good. Like when he'll grab Piotr Jan on a single leg, he'll raise the hip really high. He'll sweep out your other leg. Really good at takedowns like that. Really creative with his takedowns. So got to mention the takedown versatility. He can take you down from back position as well. He can also slam the opponents. We know he did that to Henry Cejudo, but he's also done it many times throughout his UFC career. He averages about six takedowns landed per 15 minutes, which isn't crazy. And he only has a 36% takedown accuracy. But with that being said, he is a really good wrestler. I'm going to break this down here because I wrote something down. To me, he's not an unbelievable wrestler, like best wrestler in the UFC level. I know some people may think he is because he is effective with it. He does win fights. He is on a really good run right now. But to me, he's very good, but he's more confident with using techniques he's learned than other fighters are. And he's got very refined technique. It feels like he does it more than other fighters. I feel like he, in the training, he's shooting these takedowns more than other fighters do. I feel like it's because of his output, right? That benefits him in training. So he has more experience practicing these techniques. When you watch him fight, he does not look hesitant to shoot a takedown at all. Doesn't look worried about running into strikes. So I don't think he's like a crazy wrestler, but he's very confident with using it. He's also pretty good at setting up takedowns, nice overhands into takedowns. Again, I talked about he catches strikes as well. Also shoots below strikes really good because he's kind of shorter with his stature so he's really good at that also extremely opportunistic with takedowns against marlon rice he got a couple crazy takedowns against marlon rice overall he knew when he needed to use his wrestling his fight iq with his wrestling is really good and i talked about why i think his wrestling isn't crazy i do think part of it is he doesn't hold the opponent down too much he doesn't really have a smothering 
constantly on top of you wrestling style but he makes you get up and takes you down again and if you have the cardio advantage that's going to go hand in hand that works really well for him now i talked about his judo background with his takedown versatility but he also gets some sloppy takedowns he's just really physical he'll like grab you and squeeze you in certain positions headlocks and throws and things like that and just he's a little reckless overall with his whole style i talked about his striking his wrestling is kind of crazy as well there's really no fear with it he'll just throw himself into certain positions and he's a little reckless with his wrestling but it's effective because he's got a cardio advantage because he works so hard and again his control is mid he's not a guy who's going to lay on someone for four minutes 30 seconds of a round in my opinion he'd have to have a big wrestling disparity but at the top of the bantamweight division i don't think we're going to see much of that so yeah not great control not great bjj either like he it's decent it is decent we haven't seen too much of it but i do know it's decent based on some of the submission attempts i've seen him go for in certain fights but yeah he's more he's more of just a wrestler just a real wrestler takedown type of guy excellent grip strength really good slams and yeah that's how i feel about marab's grappling it's definitely the best attribute of his game so now why is marab Valdez really so good talking about all the things that i talked about his striking his grappling it comes down to his massive cardio advantage that he holds over a lot of opponents. I do think that's a big part. As far as people describing his style, a lot of people will say it's constant output. It's constant pressure. But I would be hesitant to say it's constant pressure. Now, obviously, that depends on the opponent. If the opponent is letting him pressure you, I think he's fine with putting that high pace on, takedowns up against the cage and things like that. But from what we've seen against Ahudo, against Marlon Marais against uh Piotr Jan like he's not always backing you up against the cage sometimes he's in the center of the cage exchanging power shots sometimes he's on the back foot even but the thing is when he's in these various positions he's constantly keeping his output high he'll shoot takedowns off the back foot he'll shoot takedowns when you're up against the cage he'll utilize his clinch he's constantly doing something and that's the main reason why I think he's so effective and it's surprising a little bit because when I think about his style I don't think it's the most I don't think it's an unbelievable style for bantamweight I think he's not naturally that gifted as far as athleticism and things like that I think he's just a workhorse I think he trains harder than a lot of fighters I really do I think he just trains harder now that's all just assumption but I know he comes from a good camp I know he was kind of green when he went to Saralongo and moved to the USA. I know he's really improved on his style, and I think Aljo talked about this before. It's just hard work with this guy. That's part of the reason why he's called the machine. He's almost like a machine the way he fights, right? It's just the style. It's so weird. Um, it's not that weird, though, because we've seen it in many other weight classes. We've seen it with guys like Colby Covington. And I understand why it's so effective in higher weight classes. A guy who can shoot a lot of takedowns, make you get up constantly, right? Not a big control guy, but it wears down guys who are very big. But in bantamweight, where you're fighting against extremely high level athletes, the fact that he's able to wear these guys down, even when he's at a speed disadvantage a lot of the time, even when he's at all these disadvantages, his style is so effective. It's very interesting. Comment below what you guys think about this whole topic as well. Again, he utilizes the clinch really well. That's a big part of his game excellent cardio and i think another thing that plays into his cardio is he doesn't throw with full power when he's striking all of the time kind of like a nate diaz type of thing he doesn't throw lazy shots though everything's got some fire to it excellent gas tank management though i talked about he's a workhorse now i want to talk about this i think he takes advantage of the system right now he is not a finisher he is a decision fighter 100 he's just a decision fighter he's not the type of guy who's going to get a lot of finishes is he more entertaining than some say? I will say so. Me personally, I don't love his fighting style as far as being entertaining, but you can't argue that he's not doing anything. He's constantly doing something, you know, so he's not boring in that way. He's constantly doing something. His style's just a bit predictable in a way, which I think creates some of the boredom that a lot of fans feel about his game, but he takes advantage of the system. Now, what I mean by this is he's really good with the optics right when you watch a marab fight it just feels like marab is asserting his will on the opponent it feels like he's doing more than the opponent watch his fight versus jose aldo now jose aldo's historically been very low output on occasions but 
Again, Marab's not too damaging, but he outpaces you. It's interesting. It's really interesting because he breaks fighters, but he doesn't break them with punches or with damage or anything like that. I think he affects these fighters mentally a little bit. I, again, talking about the movement, he's there. I want to see him go five rounds more in future fights, but against Piotr Jan, he's just there, still shooting takedowns in the fifth round. And I think Although Jan's cardio wasn't bad in that fight and Jan was holding up and stuffing takedowns even in the fourth and fifth round, I think that's because Marab isn't the most gifted, especially in the Bantamweight division, but he has something that you just, it's tough to describe. I think a lot of it's his ability to just work hard, his toughness. I think he's tough and I think he's good at knowing what the judges want to see, but then again, he does fail a lot of takedowns sometimes, which isn't a good look, but I feel like the judges don't penalize that too much right? Stuffing takedowns isn't rewarded too much, so he'll shoot so many takedowns just to overload the system. Again, he's not a great striker, but he doesn't really strike that much. Now, again, he's constantly moving, he's constantly throwing output, but a lot of his fight, it's just takedowns. It's the opponent stuffing takedowns, or it's the opponent stuck up against the cage, or it's the opponent just not doing what they do best. And he takes that away from the opponents with his style, takes advantage of the system. He knows how to fight his style given his athletic attributes, if that makes sense. I think he does mentally affect these opponents. He's relentless. I talked about opportunistic, the performance versus Marlon Moraes. He was at a striking disadvantage, but he was able to use the gas tank. He was able to use his constant movement to just wear on Marlon Moraes. And I know Moraes breaks in a lot of fights, but that fight's the perfect example of why Marab is called the machine. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. He just breaks Marlon Moraes. Really good ground and pound as well. I just think he works harder than most. That's my opinion because I don't think he's that skilled in every area as far as being a mixed martial artist. I do think he's got really good wrestling though. And that you can't deny. His takedown versatility, his judo, his trips and things like that. It's clearly really good. Now the final question, will this be enough to be able to defeat a guy like Sean O'Malley who has really good footwork, who's taller, a lot bigger than a lot of the opponents? that Marab has fought. Will it be enough? Who knows? What do you guys think? Leave your opinions in the comments below. My breakdown for that fight will be out somewhat soon. Um, obviously, that event is coming up, the biggest fight of Marab's career. So what do you guys think makes Marab a machine? If you want to like this video and subscribe, I appreciate it massively. Thank you. And yes, thanks for watching this video.